What's up guys, Crescent here. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the Jungle Scout web app and Chrome extension to properly set yourself up for success while you do product research. Stick around. Now I know product research can be a serious source of frustration for many people, especially when you're new. So today, I'm gonna to walk you through step-by-step step what I do to find successful products to launch on Amazon. Let's get started. Now, before we get started, there's one key point that I wanna make sure that everybody does before you start product research. Now, I think a lot of people don't do this step, not because they forget, but because they don't know that they need to do it. Okay, now what, what is that? That's plan out your product research before you start, okay? Now, I'll leave a YouTube card up here to a, a previous video that I made on this topic about the two mistakes that everybody's making I go into detail about what I'm talking about here. Go watch that video and come back. So what do I mean by plan out your product research? What I'm talking about is you need to figure out your targets before you start product research. So you have something to aim for, okay? So what you need to do is grab a pen and a piece of paper so you can write it down and have it in front of you at all times. So first thing you need to do is figure out a realistic profit margin that you need to make every month. Okay, whether that's $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, whatever is realistic for you, okay? Most people are gonna say they need around $3,000 profit per month. Write that down, $3,000, okay? Now, if you break that down more to per day, okay, that means you need to make $100 per day profit, right? $3,000 divided by 30, it's $100 per day profit. Now, to break that down some more, $100 per day, how are you gonna make the $100? How many units do you need to sell? Okay, so realistically, let's just say you wanna sell 10 units per day. So that means you need to have a profit margin of $10 per unit, right? It's simple math. 10 units per day times $10 profit per unit will make you the $100 profit that you need per day, okay? Now, if you wanna do 20 units a day, then you can potentially only have a $5 profit margin, right? Now, if you want a $20 profit margin, then you'll need to sell five units per day. But keep in mind, the bigger that profit margin is, the more value you're gonna to have to add to that product, or you need to find a way to lower your manufacturing costs, right? It's gonna be harder to find products with huge profit margins, and it's gonna be easier to find products with a smaller profit margin but you don't want that profit margin too small or else you're wasting your time you're not making much money right you're spending all this effort to do something to make one or two dollars it's not worth it so the minimum you want is around five dollars for me five dollars minimum per unit okay but I personally only look for products that'll make me at least ten dollars profit per unit to make it worth my time okay so ten units per day ten dollars profit per unit will make you the hundred dollars profit per day, okay? So write that down. 10 units per day at $10 profit each will give you the $100, okay? And that'll make you the $3,000 profit that you're aiming for every month, all right? And that also means you're selling 300 units per month. 10 units per day times 30 days gives you 300 units, okay? So write all that down. All right, so now that you have all that written down on a piece of paper in front of you, right? we can get started with the product research. All right, so what do you need to do efficient and effective product research? You need two pieces of software, the Jungle Scout web app and the Chrome extension. There's a link in the description below to the Jungle Scout website, click it and you can purchase it there, okay? Go to Jungle Scout, click on products and go on this link, the Chrome extension, okay? Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see this pro version. You don't need the pro version. Okay, you just need the light version. Okay, you can always upgrade later if you want. It's a one-time fee and uh, click here for the light version and you can sign up right here and it's a one-time fee for $97. Okay, then come up here to the products, click on the web app and that'll bring you to this page. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you don't need the standard. You just need the startup. Okay, the startup here on the left. All right. Switch it from annual billing to monthly billing, 
Okay, it's $39 a month. Pick that up. And again, if you want the extra features, you can always upgrade later. Okay, but to get started, all you need is the startup version for $39 a month. Click that and you're good to go. So now that you have those set up, okay, you should have a little Jungle Scout icon here at the top for the Chrome extension. Now log in on your account on, the, on Jungle Scout and click on Product Database. Okay, and you'll be presented with this page. So what is the Product Database? It is a collection of all of the products in the Amazon Marketplace, every single one of them. And it stores every single specific data point about it, okay? Right down to the price, how many units they sell, uh, how much the product weighs, what the revenue is, um, how many reviews they have, uh, what the ratings are, etc., etc. Okay, every single uh, specific detail is in the database. And what's great about that is then you can set filters for the criteria that you're looking for, and it'll filter out the, the products that you're searching for. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is choose the marketplace that you're in. And uh, I'm assuming most people here are going to be in the U.S. marketplace, so select U.S. Now, in the categories here, yours is probably going to look different than mine. Uh, yours is going to have the default categories selected, and those are going to be all the ungated categories. All right. Now, mine, I have a bunch of them deselected because I just don't want to sell in those categories, and that's a personal preference. So you can choose or customize it based on what your preferences are. So, for example, I have automotive turned off clothing, cell phone accessories, electronics, uh, toys and games turned off. And I don't want to do those because those uh, niches are way too competitive or there's too much return rates on them. Like electronics is uh, people return tend to return a lot more than other categories. So I don't want to deal with that. Same with toys and games and cell phone accessories and stuff. It's just way too uh, competitive of a niche. And I don't want to sell those products. Okay. Now, if you want to uh, turn them on or off these categories, orange is on and dimmed is off. All right, moving on to the filters. Now, remember when I said you had to write down your goals and targets before you start a product research? Well, this is the first time that information is gonna come in handy, okay? Now for the filters, there's only a few of these that you need to be aware of and fill out, okay? And that's the price, the estimated sales, and the reviews. I'm not gonna get into any of the advanced product research methods until later on or in another video. Okay, I might touch on it a little bit, but for now, you're going to want to set the price at a price point where you can make your profit margin, comfortably make your profit margin. That includes your manufacturing costs and the Amazon fees. Okay, but you don't want to set it too high either because you want to make sure the product you're selling is still an impulse buy to the customer. And generally, that's going to be anywhere from $20 to $50, okay, in that price range. Now, how did I come up with $20? Like I said, you need to make that $10 profit margin and include your manufacturing cost per unit and the Amazon fulfillment fees, okay? So the $10 needs to fit in there. If, you, if, the price, if the retail price of that unit is too low, for example, if you're trying to sell a $10 product, how are you gonna make a $10 profit margin? You can't, right? If it's $15, that only leaves $5 for your manufacturing costs and Amazon fees probably not going to happen either. Okay. So $20 is probably the lowest you want to go to comfortably make $10 a profit per unit. Now, why did I put $19.95? Because I want to catch those other products that are right on the borderline. And same with $51 instead of 50. I want to catch those ones that are a little bit on the high end of the borderline as well. Okay. Now estimated sales, 300. Why does that number look familiar? Well, you need to sell 300 units per month, right? 10 units per day to, at $10 profit per unit to make your $100 profit per day, right? That also equals to 10 units per day times 30 is 300 units per month. So you want to set that at a minimum that, that the products that you're filtering out sell at least 300 per month, okay? Now, how do you determine the competition in that niche? Well, we use reviews, all right? The more reviews a listing has, then that listing probably has a lot of momentum and people are, are buying it, obviously. So if there are a lot of listings in that niche that have a lot of high reviews, then that niche is probably too competitive and you want to be weary of it. Okay, so 75 is the number that I use. 
So you don't want any listings that have more than 75 reviews because it's probably too competitive to get in on it. So you want any, you want to look for products that have less than 75. Okay. And I have weight set at maximum of two pounds because you don't want anything too heavy. Otherwise your shipping costs are going to go way up from your manufacturer and from Amazon. Okay. So you set that at two pounds. And then over here, our product here, you want to do standard size because anything bigger than standard size, again, the Amazon fulfillment fees and storage fees are going to be way higher and you don't want to pay those. Okay. All right. Now, lastly, you'll probably note, you can notice here that I have a bunch of keywords entered in this negative keyword field. Now, what does that mean? That means I further want to eliminate products that have these keywords in them because these are products that I don't want to sell. So you can see here, Jersey, Adidas, Nike, Under Armour, those are all branded um, products. So I don't want to sell them, I can't sell them, okay? And there's other things in there, um, like sports memorabilia and textiles and stuff. I don't want to sell those. So I've put those keywords in there so that if a listing has these keywords, it's not going to show them, okay? And you can, I'll kind of scroll through here. So if you want to copy it down, you can. Okay, and use these in your negative keywords uh, field as well. And lastly, you're going to want to set your results per page to 200 so that you're not constantly paging through the results. And uh, now you can click search. So now you'll notice the search results has narrowed down from the millions of products that are on Amazon to something manageable, just shy of 4,000. Now, if you deviated from my search criteria, uh, you might get search results of tens of thousands still. Now, it, that would be something, in my opinion, that's, that's a little too hard to manage for you to go through all of those products one by one. So you might wanna tighten up the filters a little bit more to narrow down the results to something more manageable, like 2,000 to 4,000 product range, okay? So now you want, what, what you wanna do is you wanna go down this list and you'll see that the, each product has the criteria that I've set, the price, the weight, the number of reviews, and the estimated monthly sales. Now, what I do when I go down this list is I look to look for products that are a little curious and out of the ordinary that catch my eye, okay? But at the same time, I wanna make sure that I'm avoiding branded products, like major brands and appliances um, and stuff that are uh, brands that I recognize, okay? And I also wanna stay away from products that appear to be patented. I don't want to do those because I can't sell them. All right. So I'll go down the list and I also don't want to do personally electronics, anything that has to do with that takes batteries. I don't want to sell those and anything that goes on or in your body like creams or um, anything that you have to ingest. I don't want to do those either. All right. So I scroll down the list and I find things that look curious to me. And um, what I'll do is then I'll, uh, if, I, if I see something, um, for example, uh, I see something here. What do we got? Scroll down, scroll down. Okay, like these um, hanging glass terrariums. These look pretty interesting. I don't know what they are. So what I'll do is I'll uh, right click on it and open it in a new tab. Okay. And then I'll keep searching, find some more. What I'll do is I'll find five or six of these in a row, open them in a new tab. Uh, that way it makes the product features go a lot smoother and faster instead of doing them one by one. All right. So for demonstration purposes, I found three or four products that caught my eye. And the first one here is the glass terrariums. Now what I want to do now is I want to look at the title and figure out what is the broadest keyword that's going to describe this niche. All right. Now I'm, I'm not a botanist and I'm not into planting stuff. Uh, so I don't know what a glass terrarium is, but I believe the broadest keyword is glass terrarium. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it here and make sure I choose all departments and then do a search. Now I want to quickly glance down the list to make sure that what was pulled up is indeed the glass terrariums that I'm looking for. And it looks like it is. Now, if it isn't, 
If it doesn't look like glass terrariums, then I didn't choose the correct uh, keywords. Okay, so be aware of that. So now I can click the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. And that's gonna pull up all the details of all the listings that are on this page, right? And you're gonna see the price, the sales, and the reviews, which is why now the second time, the goals that you set out in the beginning are gonna come in handy, okay? So I'm gonna look for products that are at least $20. So I wanna make sure that what pulled up on this list, at least the top 10 of them, the average price is at least $20 or more. Okay, now when I glance down this list, I can see that the average price of the top 10 at least are $20 or higher. That means if I get into the this niche, I can probably sell the product for at least $20, all right? Now secondly, I'm gonna go down the sales numbers now. Remember, I'm looking for products that sell at least 300 units per month. So I wanna make sure that the top 10, at least seven of the top 10 are selling at least 300 units. And I can just count that. One, two, three, there's only four. So unfortunately, this is product, this niche is probably not gonna work for me, okay? Because I need all of the categories that I'm looking for to be a green light check mark, okay? Not and all, all of them. I can't have any of them fail, all right? If any one of those fail, I'm gonna pass on this product, all right? Now, if I move on to reviews, I want the maximum to be 75, so I want at least the, the seven out of the top 10 to be less than 75, all right? So if I go look at the top 10 here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six that have less than 75, so another strike against this one, all right? So for this product, at least, it's a pass. I'm not gonna do this one, okay? Let's move on to the next one. Now this one is the, these double-walled insulated glass coffee mugs. Now again, I'm gonna look at the title, and I'm trying to determine what the broadest keyword is for me to find um, a list of these products, okay? So what I'm gonna guess um, that these are double-walled uh, glass mugs is what I'm gonna assume these are, okay? So double-walled um, glass mugs is the broadest keywords for this niche, and remember, select all departments, and then do a search. All right, now glance down the list to make sure these are what I'm looking for, and it looks like it is, so that is the keyword, and then click the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. Okay, and once again, we're gonna make sure all three of these categories meet my minimum search criteria that I've already set in the beginning. Remember, you should have a piece of paper in front of you with those written down, okay? And all of them have to pass. Now, first I'm gonna look at the price, $20. Now, can I look at the top 10 and see if the price is at least $20, the average price? And it looks like I can right around $20, okay? Next, we'll look at the sales. They need to sell at least 300 units per month, so do seven of the top 10 sell at least 300? One, two, three, four, five. So no, it doesn't. And the reviews, 75 or less, do seven, do seven of the top 10 have less than 75 reviews? One, two, three, four. So again, not enough sales and it's too competitive. So pass on this one as well. And let's do one more here for you, okay? And these are bamboo coffee filter holders, okay? So um, let's see what the broadest keyword here is probably a coffee filter holder. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that, paste it in the search, make sure I choose all departments. Click on search. And I'll do a quick glance and make sure this is the products that I'm looking for and it looks like it is. Okay, close enough anyway. Let's do the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. Okay, and once again, I'm gonna go down the price list here and see if I can sell this product for at least $20, okay? And at, the, at a glance right now, I can see that the majority of these are below $20, so probably not, unless I can differentiate and add more value to it, okay? Such as bundling or improving the product somehow, so I can bump the price up, 
okay? And then secondly, I'm look at the sales column here to see if they're moving at least 300. And at a glance, I can see probably not because the majority of these are not over 300. And then the reviews, max of 75. And so I can count, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the top 10. So yeah, not as competitive, but it failed in the price and the sales. Okay, so I don't wanna do this one. Now, I wanna also point out that you wanna make sure that the category here isn't brand dominated. So if you see the top 10 here are all of the same seller, then I would stay away from that too. I would say if had more than four or five of them they are all the same seller, then I would consider that brand dominated. Then I wouldn't sell this uh, in this niche either because that one seller owns this market. Okay, so for example, on this one, I would pass. Now, before moving forward, I wanna emphasize something here. You wanna make sure that all three, the price, the sales, and the reviews pass your criteria for the product to be a viable one, okay? I, I get people sending me screenshots of this Jungle Scout uh, results here where only one or two of the criteria pass and they're trying to determine if it's a viable product or not. Now, this is the, one of the mistakes everybody's making. You have that target, the goals on a piece of paper in front of you. You already figured that out ahead of time. Okay, so don't cheat yourself and don't try to shortcut yourself or try to convince yourself that this product is good. You have the numbers in front of you. It needs to pass all of them for you to move on to the next step. So the price, the sales, and the reviews, all three need to pass your criteria, okay, before you move on. All right, so let's just say you do find a viable product. What do you do next? You need a product track it for seven days or longer for you to determine if the numbers reported in the Jungle Scout Chrome extension are really the numbers that it's doing, okay? So what you're gonna do is, let's just say that this bamboo coffee filter holder is a viable product and it passed all your criteria. I know it isn't, but let's just assume that it is, okay? And so I'm gonna copy the URL, I'm gonna to go to Jungle Scout, click on the product tracker, I'm gonna paste the URL in here, and add to the tracker. Now once it's added to the tracker, you'll see that it's popped up here, all right? Now what you wanna do is you wanna click on the view charts, and that's gonna pull up a graph of how many units that this product, that this listing is selling every day. Now you gotta remember that this chart is an estimate, okay? So this long blue bar is how many units they have in stock, and the dark blue one is how many units they've sold that day. Now, if you go back, you can see on each day how many units they've sold. Okay, and let's go back 60 days and let's see. And the green line is their uh, seller rank. All right, and you kind of go back here, you can see they're only selling five units, six units a day over here. And then all of a sudden over here, they're selling way more, 20 units, 22 or more. Now, why? I don't know why but maybe they're doing a giveaway or something over here. Now these numbers are all estimates. The only true way to know how many units they're selling every day is to add this product to your cart and do the 999 cart method. But that's beyond the scope of this video. I'm only gonna talk about Jungle Scout in this one. I have another one explaining how to do that in another video. Okay, so just keep in mind that these are estimates. Okay, so why is knowing how many units this is selling per day important? Well, I've already determined that I need to sell at least 10 units per day, according to my criteria. So I wanna be absolutely certain that this listing, or these, these products in, these, in this niche is selling at least 10 units per day. And I don't wanna use estimated numbers like this Jungle Scout product tracker is giving me. I wanna know real life numbers, which the 999 cart method will tell me. So if it's less than 10 units per day, then I don't wanna sell this product because it's not, I'm not gonna hit my profit margin that I need. Okay, so make sure you do that. So I only showed you that I added one of these products to the product tracker, but what you really wanna do is you wanna add at least five, I like to do 10 of the top listings to the product tracker, okay? So for example, in this, this uh, coffee filter holder, I'm gonna do the broadest keyword and do a search again for the all departments. Okay. And I don't wanna do the sponsored ads, I wanna do the organically 
ranked one. So I already added this guy, and I want to add at least the top five, if not 10, of these products to the product tracker. So this one, uh, this one doesn't apply because it doesn't look like the same product. This one, again, this doesn't look the same one either. This one, uh, this one, and so on, okay? Again, top five, I like to do 10 of the products to the product tracker. And that way, you can get a good average over seven to 10 days or longer and you'll see a good picture of what these guys are selling over that time period and you wanna make sure it's meet, meeting your uh, criteria. And in this case, 10 units per day. All right, so an issue that I'm seeing is a lot of people are getting into the same niches and selling the same products. Now, why is that happening? It's because everybody's using the same search criteria. You need to think outside the box to find those outlayers, okay? Products that are, that are out there that no one else is seeing. Now, how do you do that? Well, first of all, this initial product list that you see here is what I like to call the first level. Everybody's seeing these same products, okay? You need to get away from that, like two, three, four, five layers deeper, okay? It's kind of like Inception. A dream within a dream within a dream. Is this a dream? So, how do you move away from this initial search list? Well, for example, if we go back to this copy filter holder, you can move one layer deeper by going down to uh, related products. For example, going through this and seeing anything catches your eye. And if it does, now you're one level away, okay? And then you can always go down to uh, similar items, for example, or uh, People who bought this also bought that products list. Okay, see if anything else catches your eye here. That'll move you one layer away from the initial Jungle Scout search results. Okay, another idea is to go, this is the, um, this is the seller's storefront. If you click on the seller's name, you can see what other products he's selling. And this guy only has two products, but other stores might have 10, 20, 50 other items that you can go through and see if anything there catches your eye. Okay, that'll move you another layer away from the Jungle Scout search results. Okay, the farther you can move away from that initial search results, the more likely you're gonna find those outlier products that no one else is seeing. Okay, four, five, six layers deeper, ideally. Okay, now you can explore further by tweaking your search criteria a little bit. Okay, now if you have a little bit more starting capital, you can, for example, search in a higher price range. Don't go lower, go higher. So for example, 50 to $75 range, okay? That'll pull up a list of products that other people aren't gonna normally see, all right? Another way is, for example, uh, find products that have room for improvement, that have a low rating, okay? So for example, find products that have a maximum of uh, 3.7 stars, right? Then that means that's gonna show you a slightly different list of products and that gives you something to, to differentiate with. You can improve on that product by looking at the, reading the reviews and seeing what the customers are complaining about and fixing those problems, okay? Or you can go look at the listing quality, all right? Another way to differentiate, you make a better listing. So it's a listing number out of 100. So for example, only so, show listings that have a maximum listing quality of, of 60 out of 100, for example. And that'll give you something to uh, differentiate with by improving the listings, okay? So I hope that shows you different methods to find products that other people aren't seeing because everybody's using the same search criteria. All right, guys, so that's how I do product research. Now I wanna emphasize that this is not a race, okay? Product research is the most important part of Amazon FBA. You need to set yourself up for success right from the beginning and take the time to find a good product, okay? Because if you try to shortcut it or speed up this process and you end up with a bad product, no matter how well you do everything after that, your product will not sell well. So take your time, follow the steps I've outlined here and find a good product. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below or send me a message or join my Amazon Facebook group there's links to the Jungle Scout uh, software in the description. There are affiliate links. I would appreciate it if you use them. Thank you. And uh, I also have a link to my Amazon Facebook group in the description below as well. Now, if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.